الحمد لله رب العالمين نستعينه ونستغفره أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا ومولانا محمدا أرسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون وبعد قال الله تعالى عز وجل في الكتاب الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنذر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون وقال في آية أخرى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وأذن في الناس بالحج يأتوك رجالا وعلى كل ضامر يأتين من كل فج عميق صدق الله العظيم وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الحج عرفة أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Respected brothers, sisters, youth, children, elderly Indeed, all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Peace and blessing of Allah be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, Khulafai al-Rashidin, Abi Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, all his companions and all those who follow their footsteps till the last day. We praise him, our creator, Rabbana. We seek protection with him from any kind of evil that could come into our minds, our hearts, or our actions. And we state and affirm that there is no God but Allah, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. My brothers and sisters in Islam, we are almost into the season of new opportunities. Opportunities to clear ourselves with ourselves, to clear ourselves with the Creator, and certainly with each other. The opportunity that often repeats itself. And Alhamdulillah, God Almighty gives us these chances. And we are right now into the season of Hajj. I want, inshallah, to start of reminding you of how all of this started. God Almighty, after Ibrahim salam completed the Kaaba, he told, وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجْ Pronounce the Hajj to people. Ya'tuka, subhanallah, rijalan ala kulli damir. These people would come to you on all kinds, types of transportation. They will come to you. Ya'tina min kulli fajjina amik. Subhanallah, these people would come to you from all distance, distant valleys, all decent mountain pathways, and they will come to you. And Ibrahim السلام, humanly, he asked, Ya Allah, how they would hear my voice? It would not go too far. And God Almighty tells him, your job is to announce, and I will make sure that they hear. Subhanallah. Look at this valley of Toronto, and we hear this call. And we do respond to God. Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik, la sharika laka labbaik. Inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk. La sharika laka. Subhanallah. We, in so distant places, do respond to this call, my brothers and sisters in Islam. What is interesting is, so Ibrahim alayhi salam climbed on the mount of Arafah, 
and called aloud. It's a command that people, all of those who are capable, able, physically, as well as financially, who are capable of doing it, do so. Go for Hajj. And today, Alhamdulillah, when we are preparing for this beautiful journey, those who would go there, certainly, they will be blessed. But we also, who are not in a situation to go, we do have an opportunity. And inshallah, I will speak about these practical opportunities for, Hajj, for, for us from Hajj, inshallah. What is important for us to know that this is not any journey. This is not a business journey. This is not a for pleasure journey. This is a very epic journey that has several dimensions. And the most important of them is spiritual one. The most important of them is a spiritual one. And for us, Muqims who stay, do not go for Hajj. There are many other practical ones that I will address, inshallah, by the end of this khutbah. So, geographically speaking, this dimension is important because it situates us to know that one day we need to prepare ourselves and go from our places of origin, from our homes to Mecca, the place where, where Islam began, where Hajj began. This is geographically speaking. It's a journey making the distance from our homes to Mecca. Historically speaking, Hajj is also journeys through history. We are going back into the time uh, when we visit the first place built ever for worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some sort of a, the cradle of monotheism. We visit the place where the millet of Ibrahim alayhi salam, he himself, his wife, Mother Hajar, and Ismail alayhi salam, they were tested. And all of them passed with A+. Plus. All of them passed with A+. Plus. And certainly, that is the reason why God Almighty tells us, فَاتَّبِيُوا مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ Hanifa. Thus, you follow the path, millet, family of Ibrahim alayhi salam, because they are the role models. Hajj takes us, my brothers and sisters, beyond the millet of Ibrahim, to the era, to the time of Adam alayhi salam and Eve. The highlight of Hajj actually is gathering of millions of Muslims under the Jabal, Jabal al-Rahma, or the Mount of Mercy at Arafah. Here who judge my brothers and sisters, they pray and they beg of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive their, their sins. And they pray and beg of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help them be obedient servants after they come back from Hajj. Some sort to live the Hajj or the spirit of Hajj after the Hajj. Here, my brothers and sisters, at Jabal al-Rahma, where the first act of human disobedience were forgiven, we ask Allah to forgive us. And here it is where we recite dua. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taqfir lana wa tarhamna lalakunanna min al-khasirin. Here it is, my brothers and sisters, where we find hope in repentance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On a spiritual level or a spiritual dimension, it is important to mention, my brothers and sisters in Islam, that this is a journey towards the center, the center of human heart. Not that heart that pumps the blood or beats. That Fuad, my brothers and sisters, that is the locus of our personality. The heart that is a filter of our thoughts, our ideas, our behaviors, our actions. That is where we are moving towards. Because God Almighty very clearly indicated in the Quran that, that out of all these purposes of Hajj, 
وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى The taqwa is the essence, my brothers and sisters in Islam. So when we look into rituals of any aspect, pillar of Islam, we do find out that there is a form and there is the spirit. With Hajj, it's the same. There is a form and there is a spirit. Look at Tawaf circling around the Kaaba. It symbolizes basically uh, uh, acknowledgement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what Hujaj must uh, conceptualize with Hajj. It's not just a trip. It is a trip with a purpose. Every single ritual in Islam has its own maqsad, its own purpose. And tawaf, as we pointed out, it's a question of acknowledging our relations with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's acknowledging our dependence on Allah, need for dua in our lives. It's, a, it's an aspect that basically suggests to us that we rely on Allah and certainly one day we will return to Him. Sa'i is another ritual. It's not just walking between Safa and Marwa. We have to also remind ourselves on the mother's appeal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and care for her son. Some sort of appeal for human relations or bettering human relations, be they physical, psychological, or spiritual. Mina is another ritual, eighth day of Arafah. It's known as a day of reflection when people do a lot of prayer and a lot of dhikr. When people, all of you who have gone for Hajj, you know this is the time basically to spiritually prepare for the big recognition on the 9th of Arafah. That's the peak of, the, of, of Hajj. Because Prophet peace be upon him told us, Al Hajj Arafah. Really, Arafah is the main peak of, of Hajj. And then lastly, Muzdalifa and Mina. It's not just a question of getting the pebbles to stone the shaitan. It's a question of recognizing, challenging of our Arafah in life, our recognition in life of the Creator and relations with Him, my brothers and sisters. And actually, when we do recognize that, that we would be struggling in our lives, we would be able, inshallah, to face some of these challenges that life throws at us. My brothers and sisters in Islam, on a practical level, on a practical, with a practical di dimension of Hajj, I would like, inshallah, to point out the following. Muslims, on individual level, must take message from Hajj. Muslims, on a family level, must take message from Hajj. And Muslims on a communal level must take message from Hajj. On an individual level, we can see Ibrahim salam in his strive and struggle for his Islamic identity or religious identity. We can see my brothers and sisters Hujaj's quests for repentance. That's the reason why Prophet peace be upon him told us that Hujaj are wafdullah, they are guests of Allah. And once when they return from Hajj, if Hajj is Mabrur, they come back Kayom Waladat Ummu. As they, they are clean, totally their, their uh, record is some sort of a tabula rasa, clean slate, nothing on it, like newborn babies. So Hajj on individual level represents from us uh, uh, for us going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of tawbah. A person who consciously goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person who consciously asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness as he never sinned. He or she is in a state as they never sinned. On a, on a family level, my brothers and sisters, we can learn a lot. First of all, Ibrahim alayhi salam as Quran points out, Qad Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, say, O Muhammad, say, O Muhammad, 
Sadaqallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one who tells the truth. Fatabiu millata Ibrahima Hanifa and follow the millet family or community of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He was not of those who would associate anything and any or anyone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We look in 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 this millah, we look into three unique personalities and ideal personalities. The father figure, like son, like father and mother, that was no less unique and ideal in terms of her faith, in terms of her commitment and reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only one point to inshallah mention. When uh, Hajar, may Allah be pleased with, with her, when she was in a situation where she was left alone with her son uh, in the desert, bare desert, no food, no people, no interactions. She asks Ibrahim, is, are you leaving us here alone and you are going back? Are you leaving us here alone and you are going back? And he told her, yes. Uh, actually, he kept quiet. He moved on. And then what happened? Basically, she, in that situation, she asked him, if this is what God Almighty told you to do? Now, he said, yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not then let us go. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not let us lose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would take care of us. That's full reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, we'll, that we'll learn from our mother, Hajar. And the last point, inshallah, that I want to uh, share with you, inshallah, in regards to this uh, khutbah today is the most important for us Canadian Muslims message that we learn from Hajj. My brothers and sisters in Islam, when we go for Hajj, we see different people from different regions, different statuses. They are all cooperating under one banner. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. IIT is one of the unique organizations in that respect. People feel comfortable coming here. Why? Because they feel comfortable in their skin, in their conditions to be part of, the, of this community. That's an ideal, what we need to, uh, inshallah, work for in this society. How do we attain that level of unity in diversity? Here are a few tips, inshallah, for us, brothers and sisters in Islam. If we want to be recognized as the reality in Canadian context, we must realize that unity is not an option. Unity of Muslims is not an option. It's a fard. Fard ayn on each one of us. Alaykum bil jama'ah. You must be in jama'ah. Fa'inna ma ya'kul al qasiyah. Because if you are not, you'll be an easy target, easy way to assimilate, easy way to lose sense of who you are, easy way basically that your uh, sense of belonging is lessened. Number two, learn tolerance towards other points of view. We as Muslims, my brothers and sisters, more knowledge we have, more tolerance and acknowledgement of others and diversity we would have. Less knowledge we have, ignorance would prevail, and we would be very little tolerant towards any diversity. Doesn't matter what kind of a diversity it is, cultural, ethnical, or ideological. From that perspective, it is very much important for us to have knowledge as the base of our faith. Actually, understanding, understanding and knowledge of text and the context is second aspect, second layer of Islamic identity, first being spirituality or faith. So more knowledge we have, less potentially trouble in terms of unity we would involve ourselves in. Number three, learn to criticize without hurting. If you have to be a critic, learn to criticize without hurting. Subhanallah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam to Fir'aun, Fir'aun, we are not talking here about a believer. 
And we are all better than Fir'aun. He told, he told them, اِذْهَبَا إِلَىٰ فِرْعَوْنِ إِنَّهُ طَغَىٰ You go to, to, to him. He is one who rebelled. He doesn't listen to the command. فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنَا Subhanallah. فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنَا Tell him the words of kindness. Speak to him politely. لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَىٰ Maybe he would get it. He would remember. Or maybe fear would get into his heart. He would acknowledge that relations with God. So my brothers and sisters, in our community, Alhamdulillah, we are all better than him. When it comes to our relations, we must be kinder to each other. And that kindness actually starts from the family and reflects on the larger community. Avoid think, taking strong points on minor issues. In Islam, not all things are on the, on the same level. There are those that are fard, there are those that are sunnah, and there are those that are mustahab. We cannot, tell, we cannot basically take all of them and put them in one lump sum, on one line. We have to realize that they are essentials, they are essentials, and that they are secondary issues. As long as we meet on the same level with essentials, Inshallah, secondary issues, inshallah, will be developed and built. And then, inshallah, we will not be having any issues even on secondary once when we understand and agree on essentials. Next point is, and I often like to mention this, takbir, not takfir. Meaning, encourage each other, don't embarrass each other. If there are any differences, don't look at these differences from the perspective that you put down each other. Oh, you, you know, you don't pray like I do. Or you are coming from this method. I swear by God that I have situations, and many of the Imams do have, when it comes to marriage example. Families would not allow that their boy or girl are married to a person from a different method. They would not allow for marriage between a Shafi'i and a Hanafi, and vice versa. That's a jahl. It's a modern jahl that needs to be tackled by our scholarship in Canada. Be ready to go across racial boundaries. When you come out of this masjid and this center, my brothers and sisters, don't go, just go to, to your brother from your country or a sister, assalamu alaikum. Go to one whom you do not know. That's what Prophet, peace be upon him, would teach us. Uh, another important thing is, if you never read Surah Hujurat and you don't understand, understand that Surah, please, inshallah, read Surah Hujurat, an amazing model for human relations. And I challenge you and myself that, inshallah, today and this week, until next Friday, we read Surah Hujurat. And number, last point, please, inshallah, make dua for Muslim unity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep, keep us united. Only at the time when you are united, we would be the factor that would be important factor in this society, and we would be able, inshallah, to take care of ourselves and help others to be taken care of. <laughs>